Hi there. Welcome to The Preventable, the podcast giving you a seat at the table with conversations about the intersection of alcohol, drugs, and mental health in everyday lives. Take a seat and join us. Welcome to The Preventable. With me today is Pastor Chris from Faith Oakville, and I am so glad so grateful that you agreed to be here. Actually, I think you were volunteered. Yeah, I was volunteered. Yeah, so. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, we have had the privilege of talking with each other, like at various events and services to, to basically promote um, an event that Faith Oakville puts on for yeah. Prevented. So talk a little bit about that event, and then I want to dive in more to you. So, yeah, so first of all, hey, thanks for having me. And You're welcome. Um, yeah, it's been a couple of years because we did this event. We did a walk, right? Yes. And it was pre COVID, and then COVID, you know, yeah. kind of pooped on everything. So, but man, the first one was awesome. It was, it really was. And so it's a walk uh, to uh, raise money. Yeah. So it'll, we raised some money last time, but just being honest, for me, uh, we'll raise some money this time. It'll be great. And we'll give it to, you know, prevent Ed. But um, for me, it's more about, just the awareness, yeah. you know, I mean, because, you know, whatever amount of money we give you, it's not going to materially shift the work that you guys do qualitatively. I mean, it'll quality. make a dent. No, it will. But... It will. I'm not throwing it away. No, comma, I get but it. But for me, the big bang for the buck is, you know, just uh, creating awareness and trying to um, dis- dispel any, um, I don't know, hesitancy people have talking about addiction, like either addiction of a loved one or their own addiction. I mean, it's not like. I'll put it in the, the umbrella of uh, mental health for a second, mm-hmm. which is like there's such a stigma, right? You know, if you got cancer, you know, you know, I work in a church, so if somebody's got cancer, they'll let us know, and most of the time they'll say we can tell other people so That's we right. can support them in a thousand different ways, right? But with something like an addiction, uh, you know, they, a lot of times they won't tell us. Uh, whether it's them or a loved one, and, uh, man, that's just hard. It's hard for them because they're unsupported, and it's hard for us because we want to support and help. Yeah. I mean, so we'll just get this out of the way. So yeah. the Stomp Out Addiction yes, Walk ma'am. is April 24th. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, it, it last, or the last time we did it, you didn't technically shut down Telegraph, but it sure looked like you did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, so we yeah, had, it was uh, pretty cool. It we're was strategically really cool. situated across from a county park, so it's nice we can – uh, there's an entrance, and we just uh, folks can, the hundreds of us just kind of walk across. But even if you can't walk, just come. Right, just, exactly. And you have resources available yes. so that if people want help or support, um, you had some some good food. Yep. We have like a kids we'll area. Food, yeah. That's exactly right. We'll have some booths, uh, and you guys were great because you were there and you were handing out um, yep. Narcan or you know whatever That's the right. technical name is for it. Uh, in fact, I still have some in my trunk, awesome. and I probably need to look and see. Does it expire? So it technically expires. Okay. This is a great question. Technically, it expires. However, it's still good. Okay. So good. we is it like it's like my it Tylenol, out. right? Basically. You know, it's like yes, 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 uh, yes. And as a matter of fact, when we have things that have expired, we actually give those to staff. Oh, okay. Um, so that we oh, still use them. Yeah, now I can't give that out, but we don't right. want that to go to waste. Sure. And I think that that's really awesome that you just mentioned that I want to hone in on is that you all have invited me several times to actually speak during a service or during the three or four that you have on Sundays, not just to promote the walk, but to actually say, Prevent Ed is here. The faith community is here for you. There are resources out available after the service. Talk to some of our folks. We have grief support. We have different groups here. Um, you've made that available to me multiple times, and I have to say that is rare. Oh, really? It is. Yes. Okay. It is rare. So I guess do you have any idea why that would be rare? Um, I mean, I, I could certainly speculate, you know, I, but you know, I won't get. You know, here's what I'll tell you. Here's what I'll, I'll tell you why we do it. Right there, it's you go. Because. Um, I, this is not about getting butts in the church seats. I really don't care, right? God's I've do, actually heard you say that right? before. God, God's going to do what he's going to do, right? But I want to, let's help people. Let's help the people in our community in some real tangible ways. And so um, this is just one way that we can do that. Um, mm-hmm. So I am I love it when you get to come because you put a, a name and a face to this thing and, and you're much better equipped to, I'm just a, like a, a router, you know what I'm saying? If somebody comes to me, I'm I'm great to kind of 
be a first stopping point, but I'm like, hey, you need to talk to you know Nicole or whatever other direction I need to send them. So, I I find it very refreshing, and I I hope I'm not you know speaking out of turn here, but I grew up um, belonging to a Catholic church and was very faithful for a long time, and I had a crisis of faith mm. um, several years ago, and I think part of it was feeling like my faith community was very out of touch with what was really going on with people. And they were concerned about getting me to come every Sunday or getting me to donate. And, and I'm not saying that's true. That's how I felt. Right. But it was feeling like they were so out of touch. And I have to say, as someone who I don't identify with any faith community, I can go into your church, any of the services. No one is trying to convert me. No one is trying to make me, you know, a member of the community. No one's trying to get me to donate. And the words that are coming out of, I call them sermons. I don't know yeah, if you call yeah. them sermons. That works. They're like current, you know. You you did the one that I saw where you had like different age groups of kids. And oh. you like were all of the different okay. characters. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and you were talking about the different things in life that people are experiencing. Um, that was really mind blowing to me well, because me, it's so different. Let me jump to something you said because you said you had a crisis face. So let me just say, right, just so you know, Pastor Chris, I, I get up every day and I have to like remind myself. I have to, I have to rebuild my faith every day, almost from the ground up, because every day I find some reason to not believe. Right? Yeah. Uh, let's call yeah. it for what it is. So, right. Uh, I can only everything I'm saying is purely descriptive, not prescriptive, because I'm I've only walked in my shoes. But, um, you know, I it's not like I don't have doubts. I mean, my faith is there kind of to cover up the doubts. I mean, they both coexist. So mm-hmm. just so you know, okay, I'm coming well, at this. Okay, I'm coming at this as somebody better. who's got like a buttload of doubts. My da- my wife doesn't like that term, buttload, but got a whole lot it. of a doubts. A whole lot of. And um, but you know, I, I figured it out every day anyway. So um, anyway, I'm going nowhere with that. Keep rolling. No, well, I appreciate that. I mean, I just think that the way that you all talk about stuff is relevant. It's not like things that happened, you know, 200 years ago. Is that, and that seems to be something that you like to do, is to make it. Yeah, I mean, I can only speak for me. I mean, I I just, you know, it's it's got to be practical. And I don't say practical as in, like, uh, only practical. But, I mean, I don't know. In my case, and I'm, I don't want to go all Jesus on you. But for well, 12 seconds, just guess what? you uh, kind of get to go. All I mean, that's my on. business. Yeah, I'm right, kind of exactly. one trick pony. But um, I mean, at some point it, it does matter in day to day life. Right. Yeah. And so even with addictions and things like this. Um, so, yeah, I do it because it, it, it matters to everyday life. Um, and which is why, you know, the folks at our church and you had mentioned this even before the podcast, um, one of the things that I appreciate about our church, and every church is broken and jacked up in a thousand different ways, but they're all beautiful in a thousand and one different ways. Um, one thing I like about our church is that I'm not the only dude doing ministry. In fact, I'm probably doing less than one-tenth of one-tenth of one percent, right? I mean, everybody's out there. And when I say doing ministry, I mean, they're just living their lives as Christians, right? right? They're not – I'm not trying to – I'm not going to debate anybody into heaven. That's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just not. This is I'm going to use works. that. That's really good. I mean, that's just not how it works. And so, um, you know, they're just out living their lives and trying to meet people where they are. Whether that's, hey, I'm an, Im- uh, uh, I'm an immigrant, or I'm uh, somebody who's been sex trafficked, or you know, there's, there's so much brokenness. There. You don't have to look too far to find somebody who's broken. I mean, pretty much start at the mirror and then go from there. Right. Has it? Have you always wanted to be a pastor? I have, you know, uh, and how in do you high become school. A pastor? Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. So I first had the inclination in high school, right? Huh, so I visited okay. seminary like four times, but then I went through this period of like twenty years where I thought I loved money more than God. So got it. Okay. So for me, the cliff Greed notes is went. Good, right? Yeah, yeah. No, really, really. And I, it's, hey, listen, sister, we all got our problems. That's my Achilles heel. Is, Interesting. Okay. No, I'm, I'm the congregation knows this. I love yeah. me some granite countertops, three car garages, stainless steel appliances, and I'd love a Jeep Wrangler. If anybody listening, okay, is a right. Jeep Wrangler. If, if, you, if you hear soft that, soft top is preferable. <laughs> soft top, I love it. But okay. uh, I'm not picky. Um, <laughs> but so I went to uh, like 20 years. I got it. 
military, got a couple degrees, worked at the brewery for, you know, like 15 years. And then I went to the seminary. And all glory to God and thanks to my wife, who was willing to go back to work so that her husband could go to school for four years of seminary, right? Right? And so I'm not only not earning money, I'm spending a whole not buttload, but insert a different adjective here, right? Right, of course. Um, a lot of money on the seminary. So it's a four-year program in my denomination, right, to go get ordained, which I did from 2012 to 2016. Wow. And then I've been at Faith Oakville since then in beautiful downtown Oakville, Missouri. So Do you get to pick where you... In our denomination, it works kind of like um, yes and no. I mean, is it, once you leave se- when you leave seminary, kind of no, but it's not like the it's not like the mil- I was in the military. It's not like the military, right? right? You know, just right? right. I, you know, you go or you go to jail. I mean, you you know, you get a job offer and you go, and but it, you don't have to be a member of the church. No, before no. In fact, you, they okay. won't they won't let you go to your own. Oh, right, yeah, well, that would right, make sense. Yeah, I yeah. I think. Yeah. So. So. Is it hard being a pastor? Like, do you feel like there are, like, eyeballs that are always looking at you? I don't think it's any hard. I mean, I've done other careers. I don't think it's any harder. It's just got different problems, right? I mean, every career has got its, I mean, you know, or any career you're going to, you can be a workaholic. or oh, you, can, right. you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I mean, how many I mean, hours? I feel a tremendous amount of responsibility. Do you, I, I would just. Uh, do you, do, how many hours a week do you work? I'll be, <sighs> like, be honest. Uh. If my board is listening, I'll say 40 hours a week because okay. I know that they think I work too much. But I don't know. I've never really thought about it. As long as you it. don't say, I work 23. I get no, paid for 40. No, but I also, like you, I mean, it's not like a clocking in and out right, yeah, situation. Exactly. And if somebody calls me, I'm going to pick up the phone. Yep. Amen. Because one of the things that I believe in is being available. Right. You know? Yep. Setting boundaries, of course, but being available. Yep. And And I would imagine it's very similar. Yeah. Um, there's a good author. His name's Bob Goff. I don't know if you're mm. you, check him out. I mean, okay, he, he's I will. he's not like a, a Lutheran dude, but he's great, right? He's cool. Um, I mean, he's a big time bestseller on Amazon, right? But he's he's so radically available. Like he puts his cell phone number in his oh, books, right? Wow. And I'm not quite there, <laughs> but me neither. But um, I'm a I'm a county police chaplain, and I put my cell phone number on the card. And I thought I thought long and hard about that, right? Because if I'm if I'm on a get called out in a call and I meet you yeah. and let's say you're uh, an unhoused person or something or yeah, put my phone number on there. I mean, you know, you could, you could really annoy the bejesus out of me if you mm-hmm. wanted to, mm-hmm. but I think you just got to take the risk. And if you're going to help people, it's not going to be without, you know, some personal right. risk. Can I, uh, tell you what I just appreciated about what you just said? Yes, ma'am. You said, no, unhoused. please. I don't like compliments. <laughs> right. Clearly you, you talked about somebody as being unhoused. Oh, and I think that you clearly try to educate yourself on the terms. Oh. And, and, and you know, we've been talking about people who might have an addiction. That's a term that, you know, some people use, some people yeah. don't. But you also, like, try to use the yeah. words that are not going to uh, make somebody feel othered. Right. Yeah. Well, i got to be hearable, right? And there's got to be, you know, if I, if I want to tell somebody about Jesus— I got to be hearable, and yeah. what does that take? And it's a little different for every person, right? Mm-hmm. So if if using some different language helps you, well, uh, Chris Summer, you better be willing. To, if I'm not willing to do that, I need to get another job. Right. Well, you have kids, right? Yes, ma'am. So uh, I'm imagining that you have conversations with them about your career, but also just about the different mental health and other struggles oh. that oh, people sure. face. Yeah. So. Uh, what does that sound like? Like, what does it sound like if my dad's a pastor and he's talking to me about these sorts of things? You know, or probably you no different. Yeah, off? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think of myself as I mean, as a pastor. I know that sounds dumb, right? But it I'm just sound I'm just dumb. me, and uh, I'm a really sarcastic. I've dr- never gotten to actually ask these questions. No, that's somebody, great. Fire so, away, sister. Okay. Um, you know, so I mean, I'm you know, like when we talk about alcohol. Well, so here's a, just a great example, right? So, I'm, uh, my kids know that. You know, so I'll just I I do drink alcohol, but I but I've never I have never uh, tried drugs, right? Okay, okay, so I'm just calling them for what it is, right? Okay. Um, so uh, my kids know that, right? And so I don't know if that makes them more or less likely, right? You know, they may look at me and be like, "Do not want to turn out like that guy." Right? <laughs> so I'll try drugs tomorrow. Um, but I just I'm myself, right? Mm-hmm. And so it, you just gotta. I think the thing is just have the conversations. Like when I talk to families about. 
a different topic. So like yep. sexuality, right? Sure. Yep. And a lot of times parents will be like, well, I'm going to have the talk. And I'm like, it's not the talk. It's the talks, plural, man. you got to have like a thousand of those, about one a week for the next 40 years. Um, and that's how it is with something like, you know, alcohol or drug use or whatever. Right. Um, it's about having the talks about every 12 minutes. That's right. And Isn't that uh, the truth. And just, uh, you know, and every parent thinks that, you know, I like to think I'm a good, everybody thinks they've got attractive children, a good sense of humor, oh, yeah, and a good judge of character. Oh, yeah, their baby is the cutest baby right? ever. Yeah, and I'm in that same category. Right. right. I think I'm a great parent. But um, I don't know. It, time will tell. And But here's the other thing is, let me say this. I know a lot of wonder. I could be the greatest parent, and my kids are still going to make their own big old, they're going to be jacked up in their own way. Right. Just and it's no reflection on me. I've known people that were great parents and their kids were just broken in a thousand different ways. Flip side, I've known some parents that were just, you know, I don't judge. I don't judge. Any, OK, I do judge. I know. I would. I, I judge Putin. But OK, him aside, <laughs> him aside, you know, I don't really cast stones. But uh, I've known some people that were some bad parents, but the kids turned out great. Yeah. Right. And so. Uh, if my kids turn out great, I get a little. God gets all the glory. I might get a little, a little bit of credit. credit. You might get a little. Not, not and much. your wife, of course. Oh, she gets most. Yeah, um, right. Of course. But the, you know, if the, whatever mistakes they make, they're at this point they're mostly on them. And you also, I, I, you don't have to say this, but I know this is the case. I mean, you're accepting of them and knowing that people are to use your word, broken, they are going to make mistakes, and that doesn't mean that they're any less than or oh, yeah. not welcome in your community or oh, not goodness, welcome at no. your dinner table. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you, you just love people, I and you love your kids. To, for people to hear, though, yeah. because you, I don't. You, you think yeah. people don't know that? I'm being serious. I mean, like. Yes. I, I think people don't know that in general. Okay. They don't know that um, there are people – including people in the faith community, but just people in general who will accept them. Yep. I mean, we, we were in the office yesterday and we had someone come in whose brother is really um, in the midst of a, a major um, substance use disorder with okay. alcohol. And she fell apart when she found out that there was help available and mm. called her mom. The mom fell apart and, she texted me yesterday to say, like, we didn't know who we could talk to. Oh, wow. Right? And and she said, and I'm so glad that I was able to tell you this because I'm so glad you didn't think less of me. Mm. And it's like, shoot, what family doesn't yeah, have right. stuff? Yeah, right. And to not only have, like, people that will accept them, but also a place yep. that is accepting of them. You know, mistakes and cracks and all. Like, that's really nice. I was just talking to a pastor this morning and – um uh there's a there was a family they were struggling with something and their their kid had a big challenge yeah. and um, here's my response to them which is listen here's what I promise you you guys can come here and your kid will be safe that's my and when I say safe I mean physically safe yeah emotionally mentally safe right so I, I'm gonna I'm still gonna do my job I've always done my job and you you may or may not like everything I have to say but you're gonna be safe here yeah right physically safe emotionally safe mentally safe. I'm not going to compromise what we say or do, but I want you to know that this is a, a safe place mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a thousand different ways. Yeah. Um, you prompted a thought, which is, which is, uh, you know, I don't know if I told you this. So one of the things we started this year, about a year ago, which is I went and got a grant hmm. and we have a children's counselor who's free of charge of the community. Right. I wish I had more money because Very she's, cool. she's got a wait list. Right. I'm sure but she does. we, um, you know, when the pandemic kind of hit um i mean we had thought about doing this for a while um went and got some funding and got some donors who agreed to kind of sponsor this thing for a couple of years and so we have a children's counselor who uh, we stole from an organization called annie's hope it's a great organization oh, annie's hope is really yeah it's great. a great yeah it's a great mm -hmm. organization sorry to, sorry annie's hope i stole your worker but <laughs> it happens i'm not i'm it not happens. sorry because she's doing some wonderful work and she's she's free to the community and i you know, i don't know how many people you know, out there that are listening are going to need this service. I mean, we all need it, wait, but yeah. I wish I had 20 of her. That's amazing. Because, you know, she's what got a ages? wait list. Uh, we say 3 to 18. Awesome. 3 to 18. And so a lot of, you know, like whether it's addiction or grief or sexuality, right? Yeah, you know, trauma, other, all, yeah, the, all right? the stuff. 
Yeah. Wow. Well, that's just one more reason why I really, really like Faith Lutheran. And I will tell you, there are not... Uh, Faith Oakville, excuse me. Well, we and, are Lutheran, I mean, but... but yeah. yeah, Faith Oakville. There are not a lot of places that I would get up and be at a service at like 7 a.m. on a Sunday oh, yeah. for. Yeah, thank you. You're like <laughs> it, okay? Thank you for being there, sister. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, I'm so grateful that you came today, and I am really excited to see you again on April 24th at the Stomp Out Addiction Walk. Yeah. If people want to register... Hey, they come on here. Here's the website, faithstl.org. And uh, you can click on, you know, connect and or you'll find it. it it's obvious you'll once you get on the page, it. faithstl.org. And uh, listen, come. There's going to be no big Jesus push. I mean, I love Jesus, but that's not the point of that morning, <laughs> right? I mean, the point of that morning is to just help some people and create a time and a space where people can feel loved and supported. If they've got an addiction, a loved one's got an addiction, or hey, if you've had a loved one who died uh, of an addiction, yes. right? And that's sadly uh, more prevalent every day. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for creating the space. I'm really grateful that hey, you thanks, were my here friend. today. Always a pleasure. Bye-bye. Oh, if you, I forgot, I forgot the most important part. If you liked this conversation with Pastor Chris, if you want more of this, please consider rating, reviewing, and subscribing to the Preventable Podcast. Thank you very much. Now we're done. Woohoo! Thanks for joining us at The Preventable, brought to you ad-free by Prevent Ed. Prevent Ed works to reduce or prevent the harms of alcohol and other drug use through education, intervention, and advocacy. Please visit their website at prevented.org. Like what you heard? Rate, review, and subscribe to stay up to date with what we are serving on The Preventable.